Welcome to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to look at the June uh, 2019 paper 5.2. This is uh, by popular demand. So I'm just going to explain the second question because there's some problems with how to find or to calculate the errors and uh, determine the error bars. Now read the question. Uh, it says that... Uh, a student is investigating the oscillations of a mass attached to an arrangement of springs. Figure 2.1 shows a mass attached uh, to two springs connected in series. So if the two springs connected in series, the student determines the spring constant K for the arrangement of springs. A stopwatch is used to measure time T for 20 oscillations. The measurement of T is repeated in the average period T is determined. The experiment is repeated for different arrangements and different numbers of springs. It is suggested that T and K are related by the equation T is equal to 2 pi, the root of M over K, where M is the mass. A graph is plotted of T squared on the y-axis against 1 over K on the x-axis. Says so determine the expression for the gradient. The expression for the gradient. Right, so... Um, the, the formula is t is equal to 2 pi, the root of m over k, right? So we have to linearize. Remember, if you watched my, my video on uh, this paper 5, I said the first thing is to uh, read the question, understand the question, read it at least twice after you understand it, you then uh, go ahead and linearize the function. Okay, suppose you are going to linearize it anyhow. So in this case, we have got a square root sign there. So this square root sign needs to be uh, uh, done away with. Okay, we need to remove the square root sign. So how do you do that? You square everything. So if you square everything, the graph is not going to come out as a graph of square root. So you get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared um, m over k. Now, since you are plotting t squared versus 1 over k is supposed to be t squared is equal to 4 pi squared m times 1 over k. So this is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so y is equal to mx. Now there's no c because there's no y-intercept. So this expression is the one that goes for the gradient. This one is what's going to be plotted on the y-axis and this one's get plotted on the x-axis. So they, what they want on the question there is for you to determine the expression for the gradient only. So it's going to be uh, 4 pi squared m is shown over there. Okay, right. Right, moving on. Now we are moving on to the uh, to the table it says uh, values of uh, uh, k 1 over k and the measurements of t are given in uh, figure uh, 2.2 so you've got k the 1 over k t and t and then you've got t big t that is the period and we've got t squared measured in second squared. So let's calculate and record values for t, t squared in figure 2.2. .2. Now to get t, remember you need to find the average first of these values. Okay, find the average. So average of this will be 22.2 .2, uh, plus 22.6. That is divided uh, by 2. That is after adding them, divide by 2. You find that you'd get uh, the following readings. So I'm going to write them down. So you have uh, 22.4 for this one. You have 19.0. This should be 19. Then you have 16.3. Uh, you have 13.1. Uh, you have 11.4. Uh, and then you have 9.4. So this is going to be the 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 average t. Sorry. So these are values for average t. So you have got to work this separately. To, so this is going to be t average. 
okay not big t uh big t is going to come up as uh, 1.12 um then 0 0.95 and then you have uh, 0 0.815 and then we have uh, 0 0.655 and then you have 0 0.570. And then you have 0 0.47. Now, remember, I said you have got to pay particular attention to the number of SF. So here you have 3 SF. As you can see, 3 SF there. So it means your T must be to 3 SF. 3 SF there. So 3 SF. So this is supposed to be 0 0.950. Uh, 0. 0 0.950. So 3 SF over here. 0 0.950 over there and then uh the next one 3 sf again you see 3 sf there 3 sf 3 sf 3 sf 3 sf but here now you've got 2 sf so you should uh, have uh, 2 sf over there so it's supposed to be 0 0.47 okay 0 0.47 over there so please uh, take note of that so this is supposed to be to 2 sf unlike the rest which are to 3 sf Hope that makes sense. Then uh, moving on, we have found, so now we found what well, you need to find T squared values. So T squared values are going to come out as 1.25, 0 0.903, um, 0 0.664, uh, 0 0.429, um, 0 0.325, and 0 0.22. Again, we are following the same rule whereby we are saying that we have 3 SF on T. So 3 SF, 3 SF, 3 SF. But then the last one is supposed to be 2 SF. So 0 0.22, the last one. Please do not forget that. Remember, you are also allowed to add one more SF. So here on T, it will be 0 0.120. So you are allowed to add one more. This The last one becomes 3 SF at the end if you add one more. But I just suggest that yeah, you... Just work with the, this SF that you're given in the raw data. Okay. Right. Then it says uh, include absolute uncertainties for T and T squared. Absolute uncertainties for T and T squared. Now, to get the absolute uncertainties, if you have watched my video on question number two of uh, how to do this uh, paper, you find that uh, we are looking at the absolute uncertainty of T here. So since we've found T average, I've put T average on this column. So please forgive me for that because I wanted to use these values of T, T average. Okay, so these are T average values. So we want to use this. So we are going to say the T max minus T, T average. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be the T max is 22 point six minus twenty two point four okay so that will be for this one uh, for the first one so you find that uh, delta t the small t is going to come out as uh, zero point two if you do the maths the next one is going to be nineteen point two minus nineteen point zero remember I'm choosing the maximum minus the average so 19.2 minus 19.0, it's giving me 0 0.2 again. The third one, I'm choosing this one, 16.6 .6 minus 16.3, I'm getting 0 0.3 there. Then the next one, 13.4 minus 13.1, I'm getting again 0 0.3. And then the next one, 11.8 minus 11.4, I'm getting 0 0.4. And then 9.8 minus 9.4, I'm getting 0 0.4. So that's how you do this one. That is the uncertainty in the small t values. Now we are going to use these uncertainties now to calculate the uncertainty in big T. Okay, so the uncertainty in big T, so you do this on the side. Okay, this is working that you do on the side. So the uncertainty in T, now I'm, I'm looking at uh, uh, this one, the T divided by 20 because there are 20 oscillations. So I'm going to again use the, 
the, the large maximum minus the mid one. So it will be 22.6 over 20 minus 22.4 over 20. Okay. So that's going to be the uncertainty that I put on the first one. The next one is going to be 19.2 over 20 minus 19.0 over 20. That will be the uncertainty in T. I hope that makes sense. So for the first one, that is, uh, I get 0 0.01. The second one, I should get 0 0.01 again. The third one is 16.6 .6 over 20 minus 16.3 over 20. I should get 0 0.015. Remember, you're allowed to use two SF. Yeah, they are not strict on the absolute uncertainty to be one SF in this paper. Then the next one again, 13.4 over 20 minus 13.1 over 20, 0 0.015 for that one. And then the next one, 11.8 uh, over 20 minus 11.4 over 20, 0 0.02. And then again, this one, 9.8 over 20, divided by like minus 9.4 over 20, 0 0.02. That's how we do it. Then you move on to do the uncertainties, absolute uncertainties for T squared. So absolute uncertainties for T squared are going to be uh, done the same way that you did uh, those ones. Now we are now using the absolute uncertainties for T, a uh, big T, that is the period. So you are now saying 1.12 uh, plus 0 0.01. So 1.12 plus 0 0.01 gives you 1.13, I suppose. So 1.13 squared, because this is supposed to be T squared, minus 1.12 squared for the first one. That's what you put there. The next one, you get, uh, um, uh, this is uh, 0 0.950, so 0 0.95. Uh, 0 0.96, that is 0 0.96 squared minus 0 0.95 squared. Okay, so that would be for the next one that you put there. Okay, so if you do the maths correctly, you find that here you get uh, 0 0.02. The next one you get uh, 0 0.019. The next one, 0 0.025. The next one, 0 0.02. The next one, 0 0.02 again. And then 0 0.019, the last one, 0 0.019. Okay, so roughly these uncertainties for T squared are 0 0.02. If you check the max scheme, that's what exactly you get. So I hope you have uh, understood the method of uh, getting these. Now when you're plotting on the graph, remember you just plot, uh, uh, you follow what exactly what I taught you in the video for paper five, question number two, where you plot them as points. You have an error bar up and an error bar down where you've got the plot. So for the first one, 0 0.02 up, 0 0.02 down. The next one, 0 0.019 up, 0 0.019 down, and so forth until you've got the error bars. Remember, top of top error bar to bottom of, of uh, bottom error bar, or just make sure that all the error bars are incorporated when you draw the line of waste feet. Then the rest is exactly as in the video that I've uh, made already. So I don't want to uh, uh, overemphasize it. You just go ahead and watch that video. Please uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and so that I produce more and more of these videos that uh, help uh, students around uh, their paper fives or throughout the whole entire course of the 9702 physics syllabus. Signing out.